Uh, I'd like to call this uh, February 17th uh, airport committee meeting to order. Uh, welcome aboard everyone. It seems, uh, seems weird to have a meeting like this, but not the first time I've done it, I guess. So anyhow, we'll uh, head down the, uh, the items to do here. Uh, uh, any uh, amendments to the agenda from anyone? Are we getting voice return on the, sometimes I see lips moving, but I don't hear any sound. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, Ryan, if you wouldn't mind muting, please. Thank you. Kim sitting in her nice comfy office. <laughs> so uh, anybody have any amendments? I don't really know whether we got a good answer or not. I don't have anything at this time, but. I guess not, we'll move on to the uh, approval of the minutes. Has everyone read that? Uh, yeah. I should do that quick myself. But. Move to approve. We have a motion from uh, Walt to approve. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Wave something. I don't know. Okay, any citizens to be heard? Doesn't look like it. we haven't got any in here. Jeff doesn't qualify. Glad he can wear a mask and nobody will recognize him. No citizens to be heard, then we'll go to uh, item number five which is primary fixed base operator and manager agreements. Who wants to, Christy, you wanna take that one? Yeah, I certainly can introduce that. Um, before we start this item, I just have a really few quick housekeeping items. Um, I will note that we have another meeting starting in here at five, so we'll have to wrap up our meeting today at about 4.50 if we're, if we're at that point. Um, I also wanna welcome Jay Philippi. He's the new Ward 2 Airport Committee representative. I don't see him on the phone yet, um, but we welcome him to the committee. And I also just got word that Moorhead received $13,000 of federal funding through a recent um, coronavirus bill for cleaning and safety related efforts out at the airport. So we'll be looking more into that, um, but good news on that front. Um, as it relates to the item on your agenda, the PFBO and manager agreements. Um, we have current agreements with Moorhead Aviation Services, which are up in December of 2021. The current agreements do allow extension with approval from both parties. We have had huge success and positive growth at the airport under the management of Moorhead Aviation and after talking with them, um, staff is recommending the agreements be extended with the following updates. The first is that it would be a new three-year term from 2022 to 24 with another option to extend an increase in annual compensation from 18,000 to 30,000. Um, the duties that Moorhead Aviation is responsible for is outlined on page three, or three of your packet. And we've just had, again, tremendous positive feedback from airport users. After reviewing years of past airport budgets, I have made um, some preliminary changes to the 2022 budget and am able to accommodate this increase in change um, with no change in rents or other thing from airport users. So the requested action of the commission is uh, staff is recommending approval of the agreements with the proposed updates for the mayor and council consideration. I can move approval. This is Steve Lindos. 
I'll second. Recommendation. Okay, we have a, a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Second? Are you getting these? <laughs> yep, looks like the second came from Jay. Thank you, Jay. Okay. Yep. Uh, discussion? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 That last aye, was that an opposed or a favor? In favor. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Motion is passed. 13,000 for heating for the airport? Um, no, it's related to the coronavirus, yeah. so it's cleaning. Oh, cleaning. I thought you said heating. Okay. $13,000 worth of wet wipes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I misunderstood her. I thought you said heating. I was kind of curious about that. Okay, any, uh, any further uh, thing on that, uh, Christy, as far as? No, I just want to thank Moorhead Aviation. They've just been such a sh tremendous asset out at the airport. So I'm, I'm glad that they wanted to continue the relationship. Yeah, I was agree, I agree with you. Thinking that also, I'd like to extend my uh, hearty thanks to that. The job that's been done and the uh, enthusiasm that's been shown uh, just by them out there working and, and getting the job done. So, I've been out there quite a bit, and you're getting a bargain even at this, that's for sure. So, like I say, I've been out there quite a bit. Okay. Yep, we got. Uh, RFQ for engineering services. I can also introduce that one. Um, so every five years, the airport issues a request for qualifications and proposals for engineering planning and architectural consulting services for projects at the airport. This process allows airports to work with a firm for a five-year period um, so that separate proposals are not required for every project. And we also have a point of contact if other needs arise, like um, just as an example, uh, survey staking for a new hangar, for example. The current agreement is with Mead and Hunt and that ends in December of 2021. So we're looking um, to kick off the RFQ process. We have a draft timeline on page four and that is, you know, subject to change. We, we have enough time here this year to get through this. So um, we're not in a, in a big rush or anything. Um, but I do want to make sure that, you know, the, the RFQ goes through the airport committee, city council, as well as the FAA before it gets um, out into the um, out into the world for, for submittals. There are two motions that I'm hoping for on this item. The first is I'm hoping for two volunteers from the airport committee to serve on the selection group. It would include reviewing all of the proposals that come in and scoring them, meeting with the group that includes other city staff, potentially doing interviews, and then making a recommendation to the airport committee as well as recommending the RFQ um, with any updates to the City Council. Um, I will note that I had some conversations with um, committee member Steve Lindos, who had um, a really great idea for including one additional item in the RFQ. And this, I think, would be best placed on page six under the criteria for review information and potentially including some points for firms that either are or subcontract services with women, minority, and veteran-owned subcontractors. Um, this would this is very similar to the process that we have right now for contractors that are doing work at the airport. That was our DBE goal that we looked at last year, um, and just um, granting some points and and making that sort of one of our goals for the RFQ um, would be something for consideration. Um, also, in talking with a few other organizations, they also recommended putting on um, within the RFQ some additional links for finding, for example, veteran-owned businesses or women or minority-owned businesses, so we can add those to the proposal as well. So just looking to get any feedback um, on the RFQ, as well as some potential volunteers. 
Okay. But uh, as far as that extra, the modification to the scoring system, does that have? Um, if the if the committee is supportive of that concept, I'll just go ahead and draft some language regarding that before I submit it to the FAA for review. Discussion on that part of it, anyhow, at least from anybody. So this is Steve Lindos, and and obviously I was talking to Christy about. Fantastic what, what she brings to um, this process. Um, and I guess one of the questions would be if, if the committee wanted to give her some direction or if she had a uh, suggestion for kind of the, how the points, the weighting that she would um, put in that process. I don't have any real. Uh... Well, some of the criteria that we're looking at, you know, we have we have some criteria that are 10 points, 20 points, 30 points, um, 40 points. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a 100 point system. So if we thought, for example, that this would be, you know, say 20 points, um, you know, we could add that to that criteria. I think that would be um, that would be telling the market that it's something that's important for us. Well, we are. Certainly becoming a very diverse city last umpteen years. Working hard on it, you know. So my opinion. Is So I, I can make the motion to add um, a language with a you know twenty point. Um, I'm not sure exactly the wording here, so Christy, you, you can help me out. But the um, you know to add the language that looks for um, women, diversity, and, um, and veteran-owned businesses into the RFQ process at you know at twenty points, and then approve the RFQ as written. Motion here. Did everybody hear it? Or where do those points get subtracted from? Then you're working to a, a certain number of points total. Then, or is that just? It'll just be an addition. Addition. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get straight A's. The score is going to be a little higher than it was before. <laughs> that, that's because sure. Moorhead is above average. We we we, we exceed a hundred. Okay, anybody want to second that motion? Hold seconds. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by this saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right. Christy's writing this down, or Kim's writing this down. I haven't seen her duck out of her chair yet, so. <laughs> and I am still hoping that we might have one, but my hope would be two members of the committee that would be willing to take time out of their schedules to serve on this RFQ review group. Would certainly like to, but I don't know what what uh, what it entails so before I. Uh, to do what? To serve on the RFQ review group. So when this proposal gets sent out, the engineering firms will submit proposals. So our group will then have to review and score those proposals, meet as a group to talk about them, potentially interview, you know, if we have some top candidates, and then make a recommendation to the council. Um, you can kind of see the schedule, the tentative schedule that I think will stick pretty close to this is we would be reviewing around the end of July, potentially interviews in early August timeframe. 
again, that's subject to, you know, slight modifications depending on the availability of the committee, but that's kind of what we're looking for for timeline if that helps. I would say in total, it might take, depending on how many proposals there are, maybe about 10 to 15 hours of time total. Again, depending on how many proposals. Yep. I could do that too. You want two people? Yes, please. Okay, I can do it. Walt and Wayne? I don't want to step on anybody's toes, so if um, somebody wants to. So Christy, correct me if I'm wrong, you wouldn't, I mean, you, you could have another person if, if someone else wanted to step on toes. Correct, we could have three if you'd like. I, I am interested in serving possibly as, as an alternate. Um, that timing for me, I have a conference. I'm, I'm out of, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping we're going to be out of town at a, at a real conference, actually talking to people in, in face to face. Um, What's real people? <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there. We are getting there. The, the rates are going down. I'm starting to feel more confident. Got some camping going, but I think we can figure that out too. But you know, I can't remember what I'm supposed to do tomorrow. So, <laughs> but summer is better, obviously. So, well, if it works for the committee, I will formally recruit Walt, Wayne, and Steve. Feel free. I will not be offended. I for sure. So do we still have to, we still have to go back to the the uh, the two other motions, right? Oh, we does we done the. Do we need that as a motion then? Um, if you'd like, sure. It's not necessary. All right, we'll just skip that suggested action and consider it done already then. Thank you. And then the uh, next, we still need to. Uh, we haven't done the motion on the. Uh, request for qualification. Yep, I have that. Yep. Did we do that? Yes, yep. With the addition of the extra 20 point addition. Okay, yep, yep. okay. So that was combined in it. Okay. See, and I'm worried about tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, that one's done. Capital improvement plan. Buying lottery tickets? No. What do we got? <laughs> okay, well, a little bit of background on this. Um, Moorhead receives $150,000 in funding for eligible capital improvements each year. The capital improvement program is then reviewed by the committee each year. We can update projects, priorities, and timelines. Um, we are nearly complete with the pavement rehabilitation project, which included the hangar, apron, and runway pavement projects that are complete, and the taxiway is going to be completed this year. Um, that is upwards of around $4.5 million of pavement investment in the airport, which is outstanding and very significant for the airport. Looking into the future, you can see the draft CIP on page 10. We currently do not have any grant funds because they are they are spent for the pavement project in 2021. We currently are scheduled to repay Houston County 150,000 in 2022, um, which is money that we had previously borrowed to assist with some of those pavement projects. So really, we're looking at that you know 23, 24, and beyond time frame. Um, when we have been looking at this in previous years, we had included um, a parking lot maintenance and potential expansion as our next project, um, as well as looking at replacing the beacon pole and foundation. I will note though that I've received um, a, a phone call this week from a gentleman who is looking for private hangar space. And so I just wanted to make the committee aware of that to see if that, um, you know, phase one taxiway expansion to provide additional space for private hangers is something that may want to be 
bumped up or if you want to leave it where it currently is, um, which is sometime around 2026. Um, again, there's no guarantee for funding for these, but they give the FAA and MnDOT, you know, sort of our priority list to help them schedule funding for us as well. And just looking for for any feedback. Again, this is something that we'll continue to look at every 10 to 12 months. So it's it's subject to change and update as as priorities shift. But just looking for any feedback on this. Well, then one thing I should probably add, seeing as though I had a chance to talk to you, but I'm considering a hanger too. So right now, um, the way I look at it, we only have space on existing taxiway or ramp for possibly two next to Marvin Fletcher's new one, which we is in place. And depending on the size, uh, that would depend on what we could put west of him. Based on that, we really don't have access to any other hangar construction area. So I personally driven around a couple times out there wondering. <laughs> I personally think that we should look into that. Uh, I guess it would be that what dark blue area, the phase one access to the back side, but that isn't going to give you too much additional area unless you go continue that on around the corner. So the the project that is in the dark blue, um, and I apologize, it's a bit hard to see on on these maps, but it includes it includes a what I'll call sort of a north-south addition, as well as a east-west vehicular addition. So the, the north-south bit would service five hangers. Well, I mean, depending on the size, but that's sort of shown on the graph here. Um, so that north-south bit would also be included in that project area. Yeah, if that's included to the dark blue phase one access taxiway, then that would make sense. You've got, like you said, five spaces there then be a good idea to look at that sooner than later, I think. Yeah, anytime you can increase hard top space and storage space is a good thing as long as we don't box in uh, any future plans for, say, like a crosswind, if that could ever be done, in my opinion. But it'll always attract, it'll always attract new users if we have more hard top. and space to put plans. I guess I missed something there. Could you give me a, a brief uh, overview of what you just said? You it mentioned never hurts standard. that. Right, right. I, I just think that uh, if we're going to um, expand and run out of room for hangers, just to be careful, uh, that we don't box ourselves away from being able to have that as an option in the future. And the crosswind runway, along with the hangar analysis that we did a few years ago, um, we're all combined. So adding on to the to the hangar space that you see in this map does not prohibit the future construction of the crosswind runway. Right. Okay. Good. Yep. Well then. Yeah, sooner sooner is always better than later if we want to attract new money and new users onto the property. Also, one one thing that I was approached on too by a uh, one of the hangar renters is a additional um, either a cable uh, or a tower for. A, uh, internet, wireless internet out there. Some of the equipment and technology that people want to use uh, inside their hangars, for instance, for uh, cellular or internet based um, remote heaters for their for their planes, preheaters uh, can't be done uh, without using a cell cell phone or some other device like that and uh, uh, internet might be a handy thing to get.
Can, can you elaborate on that? Because um, I view internet and cell phone access as, as somewhat different. Um, right. Mean, so you're right. Yeah. Right. Right now, there you, there's not there's not a way to um, get an internet signal past the um, the main the FBO office itself, really, uh, as far as getting a signal um, into equipment that might be used inside a hangar um, that somebody's renting, for instance. Um, and so, uh, getting a, a signal boosting antenna or something out there would be something that might uh, might work. Somebody approached uh, Mike and myself the other day at the shop and um, thought that might be something to to look at if we were looking at improvements. Yeah, that seems that seems reasonable. Yeah. I would like add that the um, internet out here is uh, very slow, so I don't know if uh, having a bunch of devices on the network is uh, going to work all that well with what we have. Right, and I mean that some of the technology that requires, um, you know, the map updates into the into the Garmin system, the Jefferson maps, and things like that. Um, sometimes those, are, you know, would work well if you had an internet access uh, right there in the hangar as well. So uh, just just something to consider. I know I was approached uh, about it, and I just wanted to bring it up when I had a chance. If, uh, if we're looking at improvements down the road, updating Jefferson charts is well uh, with the internet that we have out here could take it north of an hour. I've seen it take two hours. So we, or if we were to do something along those lines, we would need to get better internet access out here. Who is, does anybody know who the uh, supplier is of the internet signal? Is it Medco or anybody? Or? Yeah, it's, it's something that I could take a look at and see what our options are. Maybe just a, we sounds like we should at least get them to upgrade that, uh, nothing else already. So, because that's nonsense what he's talking about for uh, getting maps and stuff like that. So, and you have to um, weigh that also. It sounds like internet, if, if we were able to get a, a, a fiber optic um, a drop uh, that you could, that you could um, tie into, and um, especially. If people were, were grabbing internet for individual hangers, um, that would make it attractive to a company to potentially, um, you know, drop a trunk line in. The a tower idea of putting up at least a 4G tower, um, you still are very limited by speeds oftentimes. Yep. And so uh, I think you, you'd be much more satisfied, especially when, when I start hearing what you guys are talking about transferring. It's like, oh, man, I want a fiber optic cable if I was doing that data. Um, and and I, I'm not I'm not trying to disparage 5G or that possibility, but I doubt we're going to get uh, any carrier to put a 5G in, and I'm not even sure of the, of the actual throughput that that would actually give us operationally. Well, you know, and I right. wonder too that uh, you know Titan Machinery across the street. Yeah, what are they used? What are they? Is it may already be there, and we don't know it. So, so we just have to get it updated through whatever. Whatever's available out there, whatever's there now, isn't sufficient for some of the people that are there asking about it, and they were wondering if we could update it or upgrade it. I advise I would at least bring it up if we were going to look at improvements. I'll look into it. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. So. Um, Christy, when people were talking about moving up the 2026 taxi lane and vehicle access road to hangers, that $500,000 um, estimated project cost, if we move that up, do we, I mean, it, is it better to move things down so it looks like you have kind of a, a, an even distribution of project dollars, or what would be your recommendation for, for um, maybe changing around the fiscal year projects? So what we could potentially look at doing is um, I, I could work with Jeff to get some ideas for um, an expansion and then maybe we do take just a look at the parking lot to see if any repairs are needed because we might be able to do those projects together and we might, you know, fiscally that might make more sense. 
Um, and then we'll just kind of have to work it into our CIP based on the year that we would have that amount of money. Um, we can also, like we did with Houston County, we can borrow money forward or we can try to find airports that don't necessarily need their entitlement funds and, you know, see if we can see if we can use those. Um, so there's some different options too for timeline, but um, we can definitely move that up and then maybe even do some rehabilitation if needed to the parking lot at the same time. Okay. So do you need a motion um, to, to make that adjustment? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, that would be great. So I will make that motion that that um, that uh, taxi lane and vehicle um, access road to hangers be um, shifted forward in priority uh, with the um, if we build it they will come uh, moniker. Yeah, yeah, I second that. I have that motion. Any uh, seconds? Um, Jay seconded. I would second that. Okay. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Okay. I, might, I also, so this is um, under the um, 2022 electrical building and equipment maintenance. Once Christy has a more clear picture of how much uh, improved internet access that probably falls underneath that. Um, I would hope that it's like a, just a small um, additional amount, but I, I fear that it's probably much more. Is there, is there such a thing nowadays? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I will make sure to bring yeah. this back as an update at the next meeting as well. Okay. That electrical building yeah, is I'm hoping uh, that doesn't have something that the FBA has to be involved in. Um, the electrical building right now and the equipment maintenance storage building are just minor repairs. Um, we're currently estimating at about 12,000. So that would that would not be something that we would apply for a grant for. That is something that we would look to um, local funding. Um, similarly, okay. for the internet, um, I have to do a little bit more research on that and, and see, you know, what sources might be available. All right. The upgrade to the electrical building, is that contingent on some of these other items or is it in itself the way it is? I mean, um, it was a recommendation from the current airport manager, just given the condition of the current building. They, they've they been doing a tremendous job trying to keep it up and functional, um, but it is seeing a lot of, you know, damage and in need of repair. Um, so we'll, we'll we have to take a closer look at it and, you know, to, to Steve's point, maybe we look at the internet in conjunction with that. Um, but we'll, we'll see where we're at and uh, get an update at the next meeting. That's good because I spent addition, many hours working on that building and there's places that you can literally stick your finger through the siding. It's going to need help. Okay. For, uh, discussion along those uh, lines of uh, upgrades, spending money and all that stuff. Be part of your uh, is that a different or the different capital things you've got, Christy? Or I'm sorry, say one more time. Is that all the capital things you've got? Or um, yeah, I think the the remainder of the projects are still pretty far down on the schedule. So as, as long as we have sort of that next one, you know, honed in a little bit more, which we do now, that's what we need from the staff perspective to to keep things moving forward with MnDOT and the FAA. So we'll leave the other things as is, unless they unless they need to be shifted around because of funding reasons, and we'll revisit them the next time we look at the CIP. Okay. Well, we better keep moving. It's for. 435 right now. So, uh, aeronautical zoning discussion.
Well, this is a continuation of a discussion that we started last year. Um, just a really brief overview. MnDOT recently updated their aeronautical zoning standards to require that airport layout plans and aeronautical zoning um, be consistent. Currently, our Moorhead Airport aeronautical zoning is consistent with what we have at the airport today, but it does not include the crosswind runway and the runway extension, which is on our ALP. So since our last meeting, I've been working with the city attorney's office as well as staff from MnDOT to see what our options might be. And the city attorney is still reviewing options. Um, what I'm hoping for to today is to get guidance from the committee on just to double check, I believe based on the comments we heard at the last meeting, that it seemed like the consensus was to keep the crosswind runway and the extension on the ALP and update our zoning. Um, but I just wanted to make sure, you know, that discussion kind of got cut off a little bit um, and, and you guys had requested the um, change map, which is on page 12 of your packet. So you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, but just looking to solidify those next steps so we can continue moving forward on that today. Um, you could potentially remove the crosswind runway and the extension from the ALP, and then you do not have to update the zoning. Um, but that also then takes those projects, which you know had a lot of thought and consideration in them originally um, on the ALP um, off of that ALP. Well, I, I certainly think, uh, based especially on what the, what the businesses that are out there are doing now, what they could do with a, with a longer runway, there's uh, certainly a lot of potential there for, and I'm not talking big fancy jets or anything, but still some of those, and also uh, the bigger turboprops like the Beach 200s. And, Well, I, I agree. I think that, again, just like what we talked about, if we build it, they will come. The only game in town right now for people with uh, larger than average equipment uh, is over at the Fargo Airport. And uh, we have very capable, uh, very capable shops on site that can work uh, all of that equipment as well. So if we can get some of those guys over here uh, on our side of the river, those dollars can come back into the Morehead Airport if only we had a little bit more runway to put, put them down on. And I think too, uh, you know, based on, on where we're going as a civilization in the United States as far as uh, Amazon and, and all those types of things, uh, Air freight is going to be more and more and more and more, and I certainly think, with a uh, from my experience, anyhow, a uh, forty-eight hundred fifty-foot runway will bring all, will handle all those feeder aircraft and gives the, uh, you know, uh, FedEx was talking about moving, building a building over in Moorhead there. If we had a, a runway nearby that could handle the feeder aircraft, that would certainly be. Uh, a big plus so yeah absolutely they'll put in and then the, the auxiliaries as well as far as uh the freight dogs that they hire on contract right yeah there's just uh, a huge potential and i think that business is getting so busy it's uh you know a fedex i have a neighbor who's a fedex ground manager he was running christmas volumes in the middle of the year last year with this, so and as uh, they had to add on, they're so undersized over there out there now. That's crazy. So we might as well be in on the <laughs> the expansion. Yeah, it's and it's getting busy over there to try and get into uh, Hector when it's uh, when the winds need to be dealt with and go over there to put down, and they're busy. It's it's really busy. But, um. Remind me, what's the current length of the runway? 
Carl there, we were going into Key West with I think is a 4,850 foot runway with a regional jet. It was a captain only flight, but so, you know, there's potential there. Yeah, that would be good. I, Get I, into a 4,800 uh, foot. Huh? Yeah, I did see a biz jet a couple of years ago land at Castleton, which is about 3,900 foot. Well, fortunately, like this runway here that we have now, it's too narrow legally for a, a, a regional jet to land. I could get one in and out of there, but it wouldn't be legal. Well, they have to have a certain width, huh? I'd have to look at the ALP to confirm. Not that I'm thinking regional jets is a big, if it's, that's kind of like a extra frosting or something, but so. But uh, what what kind of a bonus would that be to you, Ryan, to have that extra seven hundred and fifty feet? Well, um, actually, negotiating with uh, customers about getting golf streams in and out of here for me. Um, if we had a 450 foot runway, we would have a lot better shot of getting that. And that's going to lead to more hangers being built. Um, if we get enough of the, the enough planes as it is right now, uh, we'll possibly within the next couple of years be building our 12,000 square foot hangar. And that we have get that 4,850 feet, and then we could end up, uh, instead of having to build a 12,000 square foot hangar, we might be going 20,000 square feet just to be able to house these bigger airplanes. Big potential. And I, I appreciate that comment, Ryan, and I would just encourage anyone, you know, yourself included, to, um, to keep track of that information because expanding the runway um, it, it's not just based on the amount of grant dollars we have. There is justification required for that. So it isn't simply just a request that we can make, like, you know, expanding a, a taxiway, for example, which is what we were talking about earlier. Um, it, it does require a significant amount of information and a justification report for that. So all of that information is needed um, to pursue something like that. But from what I'm, from what I'm hearing from the committee, there is no desire to take that off the ALP and we should continue down the road of working on the aeronautical zoning for those for those items on the ALP. Yep. Correct. Yeah, once you take it off, it's hard to get it back on there. Now, as long as it's on there. And, I, and there I would be some potential. Oh, go ahead, Jay. I move to keep it on and just look at rezoning. Yes, indeed, I, I agree. So Jay just made a first to that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Bill. Favor? Hey. Aye. 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 Okay, I appreciate that, and we will be talking more about um, aeronautical zoning in upcoming meetings. Um, so the next item is the election of officers. I'm looking to see if we want to continue on with Wayne and Bill as chair and vice chair, or any nominations for, for changes. Willing to stay on? Get more active at that airport. Like I mentioned earlier, I want to build a hangar. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to restore it. Stay with the current. Uh, yeah. That motion. Okay. Thank you. 
Beth? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, what have we got for the aviation reports and field report to just read it off the back and call it good? Or is there anything that's not on here? Uh, the fuel report is on page 14. And Ryan, if you have any other reports, please feel free to chime in. Yeah, by all means. Other reports? Well, then there's a damn sight warmer it was a couple of days ago. That's a lot better. We haven't had much flying out here the past week, so now it's going to warm up. We'll get people flying again, burning fuel. And... Good. Um, so, Christy, um, uh, this was more for the, you were just talking about the um, justification for runway expansion and stuff. And I haven't been on the committee long enough to have the, the knowledge, but I, I'm, I'm also a graph person. So I don't know if there's a way if when you're graphing this, when I was, I grabbed this and I threw it in and made a graph of it just to see how, how is jet fuel being used to, through the years. And there's, there's kind of a discontinuity you see in, in 2011. And my, my thought was like, was that when some major expansion happened or something that brought in more planes? Um, those are the kind of things that potentially could be useful when you're trying to make justification for airport expansion. That was that over. That was that power line, was it not? Yes. Yeah. The the power lines along the interstate. Aha. Yep. So yeah, that's uh, if if we know of any of that stuff that's happening that. Uh, seems to be totally unrelated to an airport, but yet it's not. <laughs> so, so uh, keep an eye on. We have proof that it, that it happens from the past year. So. Is there anything else we need here? I, I'm looking here. It's uh, almost 10 minutes too, so. Nothing else on the agenda. Just a quick reminder that the next meeting is May 19th. Any other questions in the meantime, just let me know. Okay. Well, thank you. Great, uh, thank you. For working so extra hard on this. And uh, you and uh, Kim are keeping all this going. We appreciate it. Yes. Jeff, did you have something there? Oh, <laughs> I know what you mean. Comes with this. <laughs> you haven't seen great stuff me. yet. So, but anyhow, I suppose we should get out of here for the next person. Huh? Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. We need a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Bye -bye. We'll move move to adjourn. <laughs> second. Second. Give a second. Favor. Aye. All right. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> For all you guys that are out there in the uh, electron land or whatever. So the fly-in's going, fly going to be in uh, November? Fly-in is TBD. <laughs> okay. I we'll, just... we'll see how things work out. I'm hoping.